Well, today I'm at Biggin Hill. This was the most famous fighter station in 1940. Remember that Nazi Germany had swept Europe. France had fallen. The British Army had been evacuated from Dunkirk. We were in a very, very bleak place, and there's no question that the invasion of Britain was on. But first, the Germans had to win air superiority, and that was where the RAF came in. The young men that were flying Spitfires and Hurricanes, taking on the Messerschmitts, taking on, uh, as the battle went on, the big bombing raids. And Biggin Hill, the most famous fighter station of them all. The history now remembers those men, and I was very privileged, I grew up in this area, very privileged to meet many of the famous names of the men who flew here in 1940. Uh, many of them won distinguished flying crosses and other decorations, and we we kind of hold these people up to be great heroes. You know, the Churchill speech, never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed by so many to so few. But what was also happening here at Biggin Hill? Well, there were lots of men and women working on the ground too, subject to aerial attack, subject to bombing raids. And the purpose of this film, which remembers the Battle of Britain 80 years on, without which, undoubtedly, there would have been a German Nazi invasion of our country. The purpose of this film is to remember those that fought on the ground, some of the things they did, and in particular, a real forgotten hero at Biggin Hill in 1940. So I'm here at the Heritage Hangar in Biggin Hill, where they're putting back together Spitfires, Hurricanes, Messerschmitts, incredible work that's going on. You could even come here and fly in Spitfire. This is my next YouTube film. Is it really? Yeah, it's about Biggin Hill in August 1940. Right. And, you know, I was very lucky to meet all of them, Brian Kinkham, I've yeah. got all their books, all personally, so I've got the lot. Yeah. So I've been studying this for, well, I grew up, I grew up just down that road. Yeah, I, I, I literally about like 200 yards over the tree line. So a bloke called Eric Moxie, who won the George Cross on August the 27th here, and no one knows about him. Right. I speak to all the Biggin Hill experts, uh, you know, and they, oh, we vaguely heard of him. And the guy won the George Cross, and he's buried in Cuddam Churchyard. So we're making a little film to put out next week to say bravery comes in lots of different forms. How are you? All right. <laughs> How are you? How are we doing? We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Everything, everything good with you? Yeah, yeah. Still here. Can't complain, I guess. No, what are you yeah. doing? So you had a load, load of flights booked today, but all cancelled? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Weather is a sort of put a bit of a down there, But, you know, you get that sometimes. This side? Yeah. Because we've got, uh, hey, we've got a hurricane in there in Battle of Britain colours. Oh, fantastic. That's flown by Pete Brothers, who flew from here, and North has been quiet to in here. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I've put more lights on Pete Brothers. Fantastic. Yeah, Let's have a look at the plane, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a 1940, a 1940 genuine plane would be fantastic. That's amazing. So this, this flies alongside the Spitfire, Yeah, we fly alongside the Spitfire, and then when we have um, open days for the veterans and stuff, obviously we can invite them a couple at a time to fly in that, alongside the Spitfire, and then wow. those that are still able, we put in the back of the two-seater. Wow, and these men are... You know, in getting, the, getting on for 100? Yeah, getting on for 100, like, you know, late 90s, 100. And if you speak to them on the phone, most of them are sharp as attack. And they're happy to go up still? Happy to go up. Fantastic. Well, thanks. Thank you. That's all right. Thank you. So this is a 1940 Hurricane flown in the Battle of Britain, flown by Pete Brothers, an ace who survived the war. Um, fantastic to see it. And right next to it, the machines that he was fighting against. And this is Messerschmitt 109. And this, again took part in the Battle of Britain. And we absolutely remember these people and the extraordinary things that they did. And there's nothing about this film today that is taking anything away from these people. It's just that we've also got to remember the people that were here on the ground. Two pictures here of Moxie. But this is the interesting point, isn't it? That, that you know, you've studied this, you know this. So this is... This is that's, his, that's Bill Moxie with his dad's medals. That's with the George Cross, yeah. yeah and that's, Cross. So these pictures are taken at the front. They're, they're taken at the front of St George's Royal Air Force Chapel. Yeah, and when was that picture taken? Um, I would think probably about 2004-ish. Right, OK. Because yeah, did, we did read that one of his sons was killed in World... That's right, he was fleet air on, I believe. That's right, he? He, yes. was he was killed in the war, yeah. 
And these are the so does, does the family still own the medals? They did at the time, as I say. That's that's Bill, one of his sons, with yeah. the medals. Yeah. I've never seen the medals come on the sale. No, I haven't. So but, you, but you've handled the medal, have you? Well, I've handled the case that the medals. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, the picture of me doing that is not in this uh, this batch. Okay. But these are the bits you'll be interested in. There'll be a history of. Yeah. Obviously. And as I say, the leaves in the state, which is all named after mainly pilots that were killed or RAF, excluding the three girls that were awarded military medals, as you know, yep. Mortimer, Henderson and Turner. And Moxie was one of the roads, I was instrumental in getting all the names, all the roads named, and Moxie was one of them that I got named after him. Yeah, fantastic. So he's been remembered. He's been remembered. Yeah. Course. And of course, in the First World War, he'd flown, was it Sopwith Camels he yeah, flew? Yeah, he was a pilot in the First World War. We've got you to see there, that's his father's wings. Yes. Because he was an officer in the trenches to begin yeah, with. He, uh, he was at Dunkirk as well. He came out of Dunkirk, managed to escape from Dunkirk. And then he invented a special fuse for defusing the bombs. He was at Dunkirk? Yeah, yeah. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Aged? Well, he would have probably been serving in the First World War. 45, 46. I didn't know he was at Dunkirk yeah, as well. Yeah. So he took an active part in World War Two. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I knew that he was a director of, or he, he was very heavily involved with Vickers. So, yeah. so that yeah, was he why... Was all scientific, he had a scientific bent, if you like. Yeah. So... And so he, and that's why bomb disposal was where yeah, he went. we invented this special thing for diffusing the bombs, special instrument for diffusing bombs. Wow. And of course he diffused a few, went round, as you know, to Biggin Hill when one unexploded, tried to diffuse it, and unfortunately didn't quite make it, the bomb exploded, killing him. Service history. So here we can see that he served with the Sheffield Pals, the York and Lancaster Regiment, so, I mean, amazing service, really. So this man was there on the first day of the Somme where the York and Lancasters fought. Uh, I visited that battlefield many, many times. They suffered horrendous injuries on that day. So what a life. The guy's on the first day of the Somme. The guy flies sot with camels on the Western Front. The guy's at Dunkirk. And the guy's at Biggin Hill at the height of the Battle of Britain. I mean, that is quite an amazing personal history. Wow. Moxie's not been completely forgotten. We talk about the pilots more than we talk about people on the ground, but here he is, his lasting legacy, Moxie Close. So this is Biggin Hill, the most famous fighter base in the country. As you can see, the Royal Flying Corps came here in 1917. The RAF left in 1992. At the front, we've got a Hurricane and a Spitfire. Uh, they're replicas. They were originals here when I was a kid, but they're now at RAF Museum Hendon. Uh, and also behind me, uh, we've got the chapel. Uh, well, there's just been a service by the looks of it. Behind me, we've got the chapel commemorating the names of those that died here during World War II. Yes, yeah, so when I was a kid, living just down the road, the RAF were here. We had behind us was the um, air crew selection center. Um, and every year there was a big air fair that would take place here. And then of course, you know, veterans who'd flown um, or, or part of ground crews as well, uh, they were two a penny, but now we're down to very, very few people. Uh, and I just still got this feeling that we forget about all those that did very brave things on the ground. Courage is not just directly in the face of the enemy. Uh, and I think the story of Eric Moxie proves that. Yeah. Yes. Oh dear, yeah. And the community that supported them. So we are yes. social, personal, personal stories. Yeah, well, history is much broader, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing us around the Biggin Hill Memorial Museum. You've got some lovely pictures, lovely shots in there. The weird thing is, even books on the history of Biggin Hill and the Battle of Britain, he's been forgotten. Right. And we remember so much about the guys in the air and less about those on the ground. And I know that you and I have got a shared interest in making sure the people on the ground are mentioned. We've been through his life with a local historian. It's an incredible story. But I think there might be a little space for him yeah. in your music. Because I'm trying, to me, he's an unsung hero. Yes. There's a road named after him on right. the new estate, 
but he's kind of been forgotten about, and he's a big part of what happens here in 1940. So, so if we can work together on that, Definitely. I'd be we thrilled. Are, we're all about the personal stories and making sure those, Fabulous. those memories aren't forgotten. Though, Fabulous. So, so I'd love to find out more about his, his story. Thank you. Definitely. Literally, Fantastic. the more I find out about this bloke, Remarkable, the more I'm blown away by it. Oh. So my thesis has been proved. He's been forgotten. Museums, books about Biggin Hill, and yet the man who won the highest award of anybody here during World War II and at the height of the Battle of Britain, yep, there's a road named after him. Yep, I found one local historian who knows who he is. He has been forgotten. So I'm going to do my damnedest. And I think we've already found out that the museum are very keen to cooperate. And we're going to remember this incredibly brave, extraordinary man. We really are. So this is Cuddam Church. We're within two miles of Biggin Hill. And as you can see, it's a site with quite a lot of Commonwealth war graves in it. Amazing. There's been a church here since before William the Conqueror came, um, but it's argued that these yew trees are even older than that, and that in fact these were sites of pagan uh, sites of worship way before Christianity came to the United Kingdom. I've no idea how old that yew tree is, but it's very old. Great cricket pitch. It's a very nice pitch, this. So they're working pretty hard on it right now. So one Sunday afternoon, about 25 years ago, wet, windy day, I was just walking, and I came across, and I stumbled across these military graves, all air operations graves from World War II. The one at the back there, I think, was the first Spitfire pilot killed in World War II. And I was just looking at these, thinking I knew quite a lot about what had happened at Biggin Hill. And then I saw Sergeant Officer Watson Parker, Battle of Britain, classic sort of hurricane pilot. And then I found this. And I looked at it. And I thought, so he's a squadron leader. He's died age 46. But I thought, hang on, that's a George Cross. And I couldn't believe here in a local churchyard was somebody been buried with a George Cross and I knew nothing about it, even though I thought I knew a fair bit about military history. Here's the man with the incredible life. First day of the Battle of the Somme, he was an officer with the Sheffield Pals who suffered grievously. He flew sop with camels on the Western Front. He was at Dunkirk. Uh, and then, because of his scientific bent, uh, he was devising ways of defusing bombs, but was killed in the process, got a posthumous George Cross, uh, and he's kind of been forgotten. One of his sons was killed in World War II. And as you can see, his wife, May, was interred here in 1981, uh, and it is a story of an exceptional person, and goodness knows how the history of Biggin Hill forgot him, but it literally forgot him. We've seen the museum, there's no mention of him, um, and as I say, just stumbling upon this 25 years ago, um, and now the more I learn about him, the more remarkable I think he is, and the more of the story is that bravery is not just something in the face of the enemy, uh, you know, imagine, going out defusing bombs in World War II, whether it was in the London Blitz or on the airfield of Biggin Hill. It took an extraordinary kind of courage, and, it, and I think that is something that we perhaps don't think about enough. So there have only been about 364 George Crosses ever awarded. One you've just seen, Squadron Leader Eric Moxie, but there's another one in the same churchyard. And here he is, Edward Albert Hemming, GC, 1910, seven. And this was a Woolworths store in Bermondsey that was hit by a V2 rocket, but 130 people were killed. And Hemming, as a civilian, went into Woolworths and was getting people out of the destroyed building, out of the fire, and was given a George Cross. And so he's here, died in 1987. Uh, to have two in one churchyard is pretty remarkable. Well, it's 80 years since this country was saved from an awful fate saved from Nazi invasion, and it was the Battle of Britain that did it. And whilst it's quite right to remember Churchill's words about the few, the men in the air, the men and the women on the ground need remembering as well. And I do hope, as a result of this, that people think a bit more about courage, think a bit more about people like Eric Moxie, uh, without whom 
we would not have been free to live the last 75 years.